humidity, rainfall and hydrosphere. Water is essential for life. On earth, water exists in three states, solid, liquid and gas. All the three states of water are interchangeable. This ingredient of life is known as hydrosphere on the earth. The ice caps in the polar region, the water of oceans and rivers, and the water vapor in the atmosphere are all parts of hydrosphere. Evaporation and condensation are the processes that bring about the rainfall on the surface of the earth. The factors that influence evaporation and condensation are heat, availability of water, altitude, etc. The rate of evaporation is higher in summer than in winter, which is why rainfall occurs in India after the hot months of May and June. Humidity The amount of water vapor present in the atmosphere is known as humidity. It varies from place to place depending on the rate of evaporation. Evaporation is the process which changes liquid to vapor. When the amount of water vapor in the air exceeds the capacity of air to retain it, it falls on the earth as rain. Two terms used to express humidity are absolute humidity. It is the total amount of water vapor in an air column and is expressed in grams per cubic meter. Relative humidity. It is the ratio between the actual amount of water vapor in an air column at a particular temperature and the total amount of water vapor that the air mass can hold at that temperature. On this basis, the meteorologists tell us if it is likely to rain or not. Relative humidity is measured in percentage. When it is hot, we perspire or sweat. The sweat evaporates and this has a cooling effect. However, if the humidity is high, the rate of evaporation is reduced. Therefore, on a hot, humid day, we perspire, but the sweat does not evaporate. This makes us uncomfortable. Evaporation Evaporation is an endless process, but the atmosphere cannot keep storing an endless amount of water vapor. At a particular temperature, the air can hold a certain amount of water vapor. When the air contains as much water vapor as it can hold at a given temperature, it is said to be saturated. Warm air can hold more water vapor than a cold air can. Condensation It is the process by which a water vapor changes into water. When air reaches the temperature at which condensation starts, the temperature is called the dew point. An air column that holds moisture to its fullest capacity is called saturated air. Condensation of water vapor leads to the formation of clouds, fog, mist and dew. For condensation to occur, not only the air must be saturated, but there must be a surface also on which water vapor can condense. For example, the water vapor can condense around the dust particles present in the air. Clouds When warm, moist air rises upwards. It gets cooled and saturated. When its temperature falls further, some of the water vapor condenses around the dust particles and forms minute droplets of water. If the temperature is low enough, the vapor may condense into tiny crystals of ice. These visible masses of floating water droplets or ice crystals are called clouds. Dew When moist air comes in contact with the cold ground surface in winters, water vapor changes into water and we see them as dew drops on grass. Frost In cold winter nights, when the temperature falls below the freezing point, Dew drops convert in ice crystals. These crystals are called frost. Mist and fog. In winters, the water vapor in the atmosphere condenses around the dust particles in the atmosphere to form mist and fog. This phenomenon is common in the morning. Mist is thinner 
while fog is thicker. These water droplets greatly reduce the visibility during winters. Precipitation Precipitation is the process in which condensed water vapor falls on the surface of the earth. It may be in the form of rain, snow, sleet or hail. Rainfall Rainfall is the falling down of moisture from the atmosphere in the form of liquid water drops. When water drops grow in size, they fall in the form of rain. Rainfall is of three types. Convectional rainfall. When the air comes in contact with the hot surface of the earth, it gets heated, becomes lighter and starts rising up. Thus, convectional currents are formed which attain a high altitude. Water vapor condenses very quickly at that height which results in heavy downpour. This rainfall is generally accompanied with thunder and lightning. Equatorial and tropical region experiences such rain. Relief rainfall. It occurs when relief features such as mountains come in the path of moist winds. Then the wind is forced to rise up the mountain. The rising wind starts cooling and condensation takes place which results in the formation of clouds. These clouds then bring rainfall largely on the windward side. But when the wind descends on the leeward side, it gets dry and causes no rainfall. Hence this area is known as rain shadow area. Monsoon rainfall is mainly a relief rainfall. In India, the western side of western Ghats receives heavy rainfall. But the eastern side, being a rain shadow area, receives only a moderate rainfall. Cyclonic rainfall Cyclones are the centers of low pressure. When the air converges from all directions towards the low pressure areas, it is forced to rise up. The rising air gets cooled, condensed and clouds are formed which ultimately brings heavy rainfall. Snow When the condensation takes place at about freezing point, water vapor changes to tiny crystals of ice and falls on the ground in the form of a feathery flake or snow. It usually occurs in winters in the higher reaches of high mountains. Sleet Frozen raindrops are called sleet. Hail When fast-rising convectional currents carry water vapor to great heights, the water vapor freezes into hard pellets of ice that fall on the ground. This is called hail or hailstone water cycle. The earth is also called the blue planet because of its immense water bodies. The water bodies form a sphere of water called hydrosphere. Water makes 71% of the earth's surface and land a mere 21%. About 97% of water is found in vast oceans, seas, gulfs and the rest 3% in rivers, streams and lakes. The ocean water is saline but the water on land is fresh. The total amount of water on the earth remains the same due to the water cycle. Water changes its form owing to condensation and evaporation in the atmosphere. This process of change of one form of water to another is called water cycle or hydrological cycle. Water evaporates continuously from oceans and other water bodies. Due to the condensation, evaporated water vapor turns into water droplets and falls on the ground as rain or snow. This rain water runs into sea and ocean from where it gets evaporated, thus completing a cycle. Salinity of Oceans Water in the oceans and seas contains a huge amount of dissolved salt. The measure of this content of salt is called salinity. In areas where the evaporation is high, the salinity in the water 
is high and vice versa. In landlocked seas, the salinity is highest. The average salinity in the seawater is 35 per thousand. That is 35 grams of salt per 1000 gram of water. The amount of salinity is variable in water. In the enclosed areas where the rate of evaporation is high, the salinity is high like in the Dead Sea and the Caspian Sea. In the cold polar areas where rate of evaporation is low, the salinity is also very low like in the Baltic Sea.